Oklahoma 28, Iowa State 21 on this, by the way. Uh, Oklahoma win percentage, uh, postgame win, uh, win expectancy, excuse me, was uh, was 96% on this. And I, like 96 passing yards for Oklahoma, 209 rushing yards. It's completely flip-flopped the other way. Brees Hall held a 58 yards rushing and a touchdown. This was uh, a very interesting game. I had this on uh, my right side TV over here. Uh, yesterday and could not take my eyes off of it for a large portion of it because obviously Michigan State, Ohio State was nothing and and whatnot. But this game, I I could not figure out what Iowa State was trying to do. They had so many opportunities to take control of this ball game. It felt like like it felt like they had momentum the entire game and they were never able to really get over the hump for whatever reason. Oklahoma scored a touchdown in every quarter, and and it took until the fourth quarter for Iowa State to score two touchdowns and really get it rolling, and it looked like almost they just ran out of time. But Iowa State fumbled the ball six times. They only lost one of them. Like, I, what are we doing? Hold on to the ball. Like, <laughs> so, so that's something that's really interesting about this game. Uh, end of half, Brock Purdy uh, fumbles, and Jalen Redmond returns it for a touchdown. If this game is tied again, not you, not it's path dependent. Things change, whatever. But if this game is tied twenty one twenty one, Iowa State then at first and ten at the Oklahoma twenty one doesn't have to pass the ball, doesn't have to risk anything, can just play for the field goal and win. This game was so uncomfortably close for for a couple of reasons. One, Oklahoma's defensive front just annihilated Iowa State's offensive line. Iowa State's offensive line is having a very bad morning this morning because they just got absolutely blown up the entire game. You know, you count on the Brock Purdy mistake that was kind of the equalizer. Um, Caleb Williams has to learn to throw throw the backside fit, uh, slant. Every yes. time, every time I have a friend, shout out to Keegan Renault. He does some awesome uh, Oklahoma stuff and he'll just send me a screenshot. Every bad play that Caleb Williams has, there is an open receiver on the other side of the field that he should have moved to, but he's trying to be a hero. Same thing with Rattler, just trying to be a hero and cannot throw the check down. If OU lowered their average depth of target by like 10 yards by just taking the checkdowns, they would beat everyone 52 to 10. Like, and so, so here's the issue with that. People right? up. Like the, the problem there is that Spencer Rattler was only taking the checkdowns and now Caleb Williams is only throwing to these other guys, we'll right? It. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it is a very, Odd conundrum that that they've got. Caleb Williams, 8 out of 18, 87 yards, one touchdown, one interception. This was, it's so weird. Like, Kennedy Brooks has been awesome for them this year. 17 carries, 115 yards in this game. The fact that he was able to do that against the Iowa State's defense uh, is pretty impressive. Yeah, Iowa State absolutely. held the ball, by the way, for nearly 40 minutes of this game. <laughs> 38 20 for them, 21 40 for Oklahoma. And and yet, because of the mistake, because of everything else, it felt like Oklahoma just had this game from the get go. It, it really, yep. the duration, it just felt like it was inevitable that uh, Oklahoma was going to win this game. It's just bananas. Yeah, in, in a really boring and annoying fashion. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.